Hey, what's up YouTubers? It's Dansky and in this video we're going to be learning how you can create an illusionary letter A in Adobe Illustrator. So I've created my new document. It's 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels. And we're going to start by left clicking and holding down here and selecting the polygon tool. Left click anywhere on the artboard and select three sides. Pick any radius you like because we're going to change that anyway. So we've got a triangle and holding alt we're just going to bring these in a bit more. So when you hold alt it brings them in from both sides. So we want this to look a little bit more pointy. Something like that. And now we're going to select it we're going to swap the fill and the stroke and I'm just going to make this a little bit thicker and it doesn't matter what color yours is now because we can change the color at the end. Now the important part is to go up to view down to smart guides and just make sure that's ticked because that is going to be a really important part for this next bit. So as you see if you zoom in when we've got our pen tool selected it will snap to certain points which is absolutely brilliant because it will make this next part a lot easier. So we're now going to start drawing the letter A and we're going to, you see here it says anchor, we can left click on that and try and make sure it's straight, straight as you can, but we can correct it after so it's not a problem if it's slightly off. And we're going to do something like this. I'm just going to zoom out a bit more. Again, make sure this is as straight as it can be. We're going to go along. You can hold shift normally, but with the smart guides, it kind of snaps to that place. So you can see here, it's very easy to make straight lines and join different lines up. And then we're going to do one up here. I'm going to go all the way up the top. Sometimes you can see there, sometimes it doesn't always line up perfectly. I think it's lining to the center of the composition as a whole. And so sometimes you may have to do it manually. However, here it's not lining up above this point, which is exactly what I want. So I'm just going to guess it for now and then what I can do is select the direct selection tool I can select both of these points and then if I select this one here horizontal align left it will snap them so they are both perfectly in line so although it's moved this out of position and this is now a bit wonky at least I know that vertically it's aligned with what's above it and I can just move this down now a bit more and just moving it up or down I know that it's still perfectly aligned with the one above it so let's select the pen tool and we can continue so just click left click there and we can pick up where we left off and then we're going to go down you can see it snaps to the other side which is very handy click. Now I want this one to line up with this higher point up here so again I can select both of these and we'll just select this one here vertical align bottom and it just nudges this one on the right down so I know that they're perfectly lined up. You can do this as you go or you can do this at the end it's entirely up to you. So there we go we know it's going to be perfectly aligned And this can be very rough at this stage because we can make any corrections at the end. Okay, you can see here it's not snapping it perfectly horizontally, so I can hold shift just to make sure I get it perfectly horizontal. And snap that there. And then left click here, bring that out. And then this can go up to this top corner here.
And then this bottom right corner. And this one is going to go up to here. And then it can just snap down there. And again, that's a bit wonky, but I can just bring that down. Just to straighten that up. And then left click over here, and we're just going to make this into a four sided shape. And then that you can go over there. So that looks a bit off. So using the direct selection tool, I can just select this anchor point, pull that to the left. And this is the part now where we can really start to correct everything. As you can see, I've drawn this freehand and it's looking a bit off. So with the direct selection tool, we can now select these various anchor points. So I've selected four here, and I can just pull them all to the left. I'm going to nudge some of these to the right. So this part now really is just about correcting what you've done. If you need to correct it, you may have done it absolutely perfectly first time, in which case I applaud you. However, it's quite tricky when creating an illusionary shape to get everything perfect when you're doing it freehand, but you can correct that nice and easily like this. So you can see here the bottom is wider than the top. So I'm just going to select these top three here. Remember you can hold shift to multiple select and just using the arrow keys, or you can drag just to knock those back in place. I'm just going to pull this one to the left a bit more, just to straighten it up. Now this one here, this needs to follow through, so I'm just going to pull that one to the right, and then shift all of this to the right as well which now pulls this out of line, but that's okay, because I can move it back. So the main point of this video is less about creating this specific shape to use in one of your compositions, but more about the techniques involved to create something quite complex like this. So there we go, that can go up. I can bring this one out. And then I can select these two on the left, and then this one on the right, align those to the top, and it will just nudge those up so they're back in line, because remember we've been fiddling around with a few points, so we've actually pulled them out of line, so that just puts them back in. I think here, I think we're missing a line, so I'm just going to add another line in there. I think that needs to be a bit higher. Let's just nudge this up. Get rid of that one. And then just draw another straight one across there. And again, just go and tap these back into place. It's all about selecting the right anchor point with the direct selection tool. This just gives you a lot more control over how you move the individual shapes around. Okay, so we're getting there. We're starting to get something that looks about right. Ah, there we go. I think there was an extra triangle in there, so let's just take that out. There we go. I think we are nearly there. As I bring this up as well, you can see that I can keep it. It snaps it to that same line. So I know that it's not going to it's not going to sort of go out of line or have any kind of bits jagging out. It keeps everything tightly together. 
Okay, so we're definitely getting there now. It's just a case of bringing a few bits together so this isn't sticking out. And then just making sure the bits that need to line up do line up. So that's fine, that's still okay over there. I know that this is all lined up along the bottom. What I'm doing here is just left clicking and dragging. This is kind of the lazy way of doing it and just checking, yeah that's okay, and then just hitting Command Z on the Mac, Control Z on the PC just to undo. I'm just going to push that one out a bit more to the right, just to thicken that up a little bit. And then this one here on the right, just again, tap that about out a bit wider. I know that it's lined up, so I don't want to move it up or down, but I just want to increase the width there. Maybe just a little bit more. And then just bring this one a little bit more central. Uh, you can see I've knocked that out of line there. Just selecting that one anchor point. So if I select both of them, I can just tap these in. Just so the tip of this triangle is a bit more central to the whole composition. In fact, you can select this here and just hit delete or backspace. And then using the pen tool, you can just click where it says intersect and then draw another line. And I've just spotted this one here is a bit off, so I'm just going to drag that out. And then just nudge this to the left so it's a bit more in line and a bit more like a triangle. This top one just needs to come down a bit. A bit more this way. Just so the width is consistent all the way up the different parts of the shape. Again, just these little details here, just making sure that these all join up. Okay, I think that's looking good. We've created our illusionary A. Now there's a few more bits that we need to finish off. We can, of course, select every element here and go to the stroke palette and we can increase the width, make it as thick or thin as we like. probably a bit too thick. If you do get any bits that stick out of the corners as well, which you might get sometimes, you can select the round join corner and as you can see here it will just round off those corners which is quite a nice effect. Probably just going to make this a little bit thinner. So I'm happy with this. I can go up to object, expand, leave the fill on the stroke ticked and click OK. And if I press Command Y on the Mac, Control Y on the PC, you can see here it's quite messy at the moment. We've got lots of bits of shape everywhere and we just need to tidy that up. So if we select everything and then click the top left one in the Pathfinder palette. So the Pathfinder palette is here on the right and then just unite that all into one shape and it should look like this. You can see here this is just a random bit that's kind of been left over so you can just select that and delete. And it should all look like one complete shape now. Now there's a couple of last bits that we need to finish. Some of these need to have gaps in them. So we're going to select the rectangle tool. And I'm going to select the color white. And again, as you can see with our smart guide selected, it just snaps in place nicely, which makes this bit incredibly easy. So we wouldn't leave it like this because if you go back into preview mode, you can see that there's a white box there. If I copy and pasted this out of Illustrator, it would take that box with it and we don't want that. So if we make sure that the box is on top, the shape here is underneath, we can select the bo white box and the shape, go up to the Pathfinder palette and hit subtract and it will take it out of the shape. It effectively knocks it out. We're going to do the same thing over here, select our rectangle tool, 
just drag it into place and make sure it snaps. We're going to make it white. It doesn't matter what color you make it because we're going to use that just to knock that out. Do the same again. Select both shapes. In this case, the red illusionary A we've created and the rectangle and then click subtract or minus front. And it should go from something like this. Let me do that again. And it should go from something like this to this. And it's just best practice really to keep everything tidy. So if you were to hand this over to another designer or if you were to use in your own project, you're not gonna get any boxes coming over into your uh, PSD files or whatever you might be importing it to. It's just a very tidy way of working. Okay, so this shape looks ready to export out to use as part of a design. So I've created a background already. Aha, now it's become invisible. So if I just select my shape, it is still there. I'm gonna make the color white. And there we go, we've created an illusionary letter A. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it or you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting that like button and I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you.